Hey everyone. Maybe. Hey everyone, Brandon here with Therapeutic Fragrance. Thanks for joining me back with the fragrance review. Today we're doing oud. We're doing a aro ha kaiku from Insar Oud. I have some insights on this one, some thoughts I want to share with you, get out there for you. Um, may help you make an educated purchase. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're full of joy. I hope you're enjoying your fragrances. Stay tuned. Hey guys, you can see I'm uh, changing things up here uh, in the studio. Uh, I just put uh, a black background over my window so I could kind of get my lighting right so I can film in the day instead of waiting until evening, especially as the light is, uh, you know, like six, six minutes longer every day here in the Northwest. Um, yeah, so new lens too, I'm running a, an 85, so it's quite far for me. I'm not used to the focusing, so if I have too many problems with it, we might have to uh, go back to the other one. I know this is a more friendly uh, face lens, so we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I'm learning playing around, like I, I've said many, many times. Today, another Oud Aroha Kaiku from Insar Oud. Um, got my notes pulled up here to keep me on track as usual. I'll do the scoring system last, added some things to the scoring system, so stay tuned for that. The more I learn, the more notes. Again, I'm just trying to get a scoring system. The whole point of it is to uh, get a system that helps identify if you want to have this in your collection or not. That's the whole point of this. Is um, Another guy drives me nuts. I hear his reviews. He's like, my channel, you do not blind buy. You never blind buy it. And half the stuff he recommends you have to blind buy. There's no other option, choice, or anything. Today's Oud, you can blind buy, so that's good news. But the scoring system I'm coming up with is to just help get all those nuances of... Uh, I know what I like about Oud. I know the ones that re I really, really like. And if I see those, uh, people tend to, towards those notes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in. And so far, I, I mean, I, I have, I've only had... Maybe I'll go, I'm going to do a list of my bad buys for Oud to help you guys with that one. But I don't, there are companies nobody knows of. Um, and I don't even think there's 100% Oud in them. Anyways, yeah, another video, we'll do that one. Today is Aroha Kaiku. Let me see if I can get the focus in on this one for you guys. Yeah, see my lens keeps focusing on my background. I have too much going on for it. Um, it is... Come on. Okay. Get the oil, not me. Maybe. Maybe. I just tested this earlier. It did work, but it was uh, iffy. So it looks like, for some reason, it has um, my face. There we go. This is just a dark, syrupy monster. Um, yeah, two and a half grams there. This thing drips heavier than a maple syrup when you pull it out on the vial. Uh, real quick, I'm going to turn this off. I should have had it off prior. Sorry for that. Um, also, I'm talking louder because I'm further from the mic, so I'm getting used to what my microphone will actually pick up. It's a surround mic. It's a really good mic in the camera, high-end camera, but um, I might invest in one that stretches to me uh, for this kind of stuff. Okay, so Aroha Kaiku. Uh, the only distillation that Insar really gave away this one is he did in the copper pot. I, I think that was for soaking. It, it didn't say if it was for soaking or distilling. Um, so I'm presuming it's the soaking on this one. Let's get right to the opening on this one. 
This opening is something else. Um, it is, it's, it's bang, boom, bang, <laughs> up front. Th this is awesome. Um, smoky, leathery, incensey to the max on this one. Uh, this is a note I've never heard in perfumery, but I pick it up through and through in this sense like crazy. Kava. If, if you've ever uh, drank kava or, or smelled kava, it's, it's, it's a form of tea. It's a root that, that people used to drink to relax your muscles. It's, it's quite, we have a, kava, a couple kava houses here in Portland I go to. The smell's undeniable. You'll know what it is right away if you know what kava is. Very earthy, very, you know, from the ground. It's a root. Uh, there's no aromatics like a ginger or a wasabi or a turmeric. Just powerfully earthy um, <clears throat> kava scent. You got to put your nose in kava if you don't know what I'm talking about. This this has kava through and through. Um, also, incense through and through. Those are the top two notes. Many other things going on in here, but above and beyond incense and kava through and through. <clears throat> you won't get away from the smoke that's in this thing. It is a smoke bomb also. Uh, incense bomb. Um, there's a lot, a lot of power in this one. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that in my description later. Um, I, I, I think I took some time for this one to come up with the description. I think I know that I kept, uh, I, I've smelt this somewhere and I could not come to it. And then finally this morning did, I'm like, that's where, that's where I've smelt this scent before. Um, and we'll get to that a little bit later. So the woods in here that I have, it's, it's, it's a woody oud. You get, a, get some good woods in this. A slight Peru balsam, just very slight on this. this. Uh, Gayak wood, heavy Gayak wood, um, which is, you know, uh, Palo Santo also. So um, if you burn, here, let me get this for you. So if you burn uh, Palo Santo like this, the, the top of that, the burnt part of that, you get some of this in the notes of this thing. Um, yeah, um, that's how I did it. And a birch tar, a very heavy birch tar in this one. So if you're familiar with birch tar fragrances, this has a great birch tar note. Um, again, I don't know if perfumers are reading this or not, but this... This is a great natural <laughs> accord for a lot of things that perfumers do with synthetics that happens naturally in this oud here. So um, I guess that's another reason I go into detail in the scoring system and whatnot because that's that is the stuff I'm using my oud for. And there's a lot going in on this one that you can use as, as a base for nice fragrance. Um, the pro this one projects the projects in the slage on this are definitely 12 inches out a foot out so people are going to smell this one yeah so this everything that i've mentioned just keep aware of that i don't mind that i think people expect me when i'm out and about to smell like this and um yeah it just it goes with my personality it goes with me this is um yeah i'm gonna especially when i'm in the outdoors mode of um being active and, and getting outdoors all the time. This is this would be a signature scent for that kind of when I'm just going and doing that stuff all the time. Um, when I was real heavy into photography, especially in the fall, I mean, I was going out three, four times a week out into the woods and, you know, come, this is a scent I'd wear all day to do that job, definitely. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, let's let's get into um, it also, it does have aquatic in it. I, I smell some aquatic water into this one. More of like a wet campfire. Um, a muddy mud around the campfire in, in a good way. I mean, it's a campfire smell, so, but also that, that, that wet, when you put out the fire, that smell. I get that from this. I smell the wetness in this, and, and there's an effect on, on the oud in, in that sense. Um, if, yeah, if you stay with it a while, it, uh, it starts 
blending into a majestic juice. I mean, when I put this on my wrist, it was, again, heavier than maple syrup. I put a heavy swipe on, almost less than tar, but just nice, thick, lovely stuff. And, and rubbing in the skin. Dis the color disappeared. I, th I thought I was going to have a brown color there, but it disappeared. You know, put it into the beard and, and the neck and started on my wrists. It's still there, strong. Uh, second wearing today of this one. Um, lots of smells. I mean, all my ouds, I mean, I smell them at least four times a week. And that's, I mean, I want to say every day, but you know, some, some days I'm away. So at least four times a week, I'm, I'm smelling these things. Um, the the in sniff. So I mentioned all those woods, and then the middle it'll go into um, a dried cedar wood, a damp drying cedar wood that I get, almost a, a little bit, not too sawdusty, but as if you were even cutting the edge of a damp cedar plank. And then not smelling the sawdust, but smelling the end that was just cut. That kind of smell, uh, filtered right below the smoke. Great smell. Uh, at the end of the sniff, definitely the heavy Palo Santos there that I showed you. The, uh, this thing is there. Now it won't focus in. <laughs> oh well. I, at least I showed you at the beginning. Um, yeah and even sweet cedar wood and the sweetness comes in the sweetness i i had to take 10 minutes to to really think through what the sweetness the sweetness was and um because i haven't heard it described but i would have to um definitely the, the, there's fruitiness there but i'd go with a dark dried fruit almost like when you buy dried cherries dried figs and dates and if you pulsate them and then smell that together that kind of fruit smell is is a tone on there great dark fragrance the juice exemplifies the actual smell i mean you expect a juice like this and that thick to to have this much going on uh, for an oud um uh, I don't want to put people off here. I talked about petrol before, but a petrol top is there. I love the petrol top. I mentioned like uh, the tower guitar, not that heavy this time, uh, uh, very light. Um, we'll see, I am gonna go work out, so we'll see if that gets heavier like last time or not. Um, if the scent doesn't change, I will update the video. If the scent drastically changes, I'll update the video for you guys, um, yeah. Um, but there's yeah the petrol's there. I mean this this scent is um, here. Here we go. I have this for you guys too. If if you don't love this, you need to stay away from this scent. This is a city on fire by Imaginary Authors. Um, the smokiness and heaviness campfire in there is, is in here. This has a lot more than that also. Uh, here we go. Um, so what this, the, yeah, as I, I was just contemplating, thinking about this fragrance, we had uh, huge forest fires here in the Northwest a year ago, the Columbia Gorge, worst fire in history, just huge amounts burned down. And during that time, we're 10 to 20 miles from the gorge. So the winds, when they picked up ash, would cover our house and cars. Uh, on those days, I went out uh, cycling, 20 plus mile rides, a couple of those days. I mean, you, you just smelled it. Um, th this scent brought me back to that burnt forest fire uh, to a T. This is more wet than that was. That was more of, of a dry, but the, the campfire smell that was there with the evergreens and all that going on, th this scent takes me right there. I'm like that's that's where that scent that's where I've smelled that tone before with all that and then that makes I mean the gorge is just filled with just lush uh, great evergreens and forest and, and what what have you um, it was during the dry drier months obviously that's why it burned but um, this one does have a wet on top of it but that smell is just there through and through it took me right back to that 
Uh, this swings on the masculine side. I mean, if there was zero to 100, we're up in the 90s on this one. So be aware of that. Um, I think I've described if you like smoky fragrances or not. If you don't like smoky fragrances, uh, veer, veer away from this one. For me, this is a scent that I would have on um, I, like a multi-day hike. If I was doing a multi-day hike, I would take this oud with me and, and put this on and wear it um, all the time. And it would keep me going. It would just the scent I'd want to carry. Um, also, we do campfires a lot in the summer with friends and just get together and hang out. I, I, I'll put this, I'm going to save this and I'll put this on for those campfires. Or, or you know the, the fires in people's backyards when hey we're doing a fire tonight roast them s'mores or whatever i'll put the scent on before i go and this is what i want to smell like when i do that for, for so it is i i would use it in the summer for that um, i'll tell you how it does in high heat with the body later if it changes much uh for but definitely winter fragrance christmas time i want i want to smell like this in december around christmas uh but just nice cold winter winter fragrance to warm you up um yeah i i had to grab espresso today for this one just pure straight espresso uh this, there's no other choice for this kind of fragrance it matches perfectly uh what else do i have here yeah yeah i mean it really just gives some gravitas to your spirit man and and everything you're doing throughout your day um, you, you, it enlivens your body that kind of note when you when you get those fragrances that uplift you that way that's what this is this is right now I'm excited to go work out this fragrance really gets you in the mood for that and um, I'm sure I'm excited to see what this is gonna do during the workout um, I don't think it'll uh, turn on me like the other fragrance did, as I reviewed earlier. Uh, and I think my last, the one before last review. Um, the finish, the kava never leaves on this one. The kava and the incense stay. The smoke does die down a bit, so um, it's, it's just tracing the background. Lovely smoky scent. Um... Oud is perfume. I'm trying to put that in my titles. Oud really is perfume. This one is the bar to beat for smoke for me. The incense is there. Oh yeah, let's get in the scoring system. Um, here's here's the scoring I have, and I've added some. So the animalics on this one, I would do a three out of five for this one. The earthiness, I added earthy. Four out of five. This the kava, and the earthy tones this brings in from the the you know the forest a forest floor kind of earth, and and just cut wood kind of earth, that that kind of earthy, very earthy, roots like a root rooty earth or earthy kind of smell. Uh, the florals two out of five a bit uh, more on the greener side of florals. I, I put two out of five. Aquatic. Um, I would go three out of five. I know a lot of people said they didn't pull aquatics out of this in the reviews I've seen, but it, it smells wet to me, very wet, like wet campfire. There, there's a wet top on this to me, heavily. Love to hear your thoughts on that one. Spices, um, I, I'll put this at a two five. Uh, very slight spices, a little bit of there, here and there in whiffs. Two out of five for me on that one. Uh, resins, uh, two and a half out of five, they're buried. They're there, um, the, the, the top notes, you really have to smell through those top notes. They're so powerful, but I definitely pick up some resins behind the scenes. Incense, which I added, uh, four out of five. I'll, you know what, I'm gonna go 4.5 out of five and change that on the fly. This is an incense bomb, for sure. Uh, metallics, I, I got a one out of five. Uh, I've I seen a write-up out there that mentioned no metallics but I, I definitely pick up just an undertone of metallic on this one and I, this I, I do all this before I read and I went up and read Insar's review just because I don't I mean he sways he would sway me like crazy and um, obviously I bought it and, and read a review of them but that was so long ago and so many oods ago that I, I don't remember so I try to write these out as I smell but um, 
he did, I believe, soak in the copper pot, so I'm sure that's where the, my Metallica I'm picking up came from. Um, petrol is one I added. Uh, I might mix this in with something else, but the past uh, couple wearings, the petrol comes out. It's a beautiful smell. It's not like a gas. It's not gasoline when I say that. It's the tower esque is is the the, the only thing I ha I have to to describe the beauty of it too. Um, if you like that kind of, it's a toned down, uh, pet softer petrol. So in the, the toned down from what he puts on his, um, three out of five for me on that addictive addictiveness factor. Um, I'll do a. Seven out of ten, and I, I think this would vary. I think if I was, you know what, I'm gonna go six point five out of ten in the office, and sitting down. I think if I was out at that campfire, I mean, I think this would be a nine out of ten. I think that I'd just be smelling this during the fire the whole time. But um, yeah, I'll do six point five out of ten overall on that projection and uh, silage. Seven out of ten, great, great projector. You're gonna get smelled in this one, so so. Hopefully I've described it well enough if you want to smell like this. Uh, yeah. Um, finishing thoughts. So, yeah. Again, Oud, Oud is just an amazing thing. This is my third Oud review. And you can see how different th this oil is. This, it's just an amazing oil, what, what can happen and how it's its own fragrance. It's literally one oil and it does all of this. I'm not, this is what I get from it as I wear it. It turns all day on you. Uh, it lasts, you know, this is definitely strong smell, 10 to 12 hours on this one. I mean, if you put on clothing, this, this can last days. So be aware of that. Um, oud's particular last less on me. Keep that in mind when buying this. I'll probably if I'm saying like 10 to 12, you're probably going to be in that 18 hour range to where when you go to bed, make sure you know who you're going to bed with. Uh, you're not going to offend them or, or anything. So keep that in mind when, when I put it in that range. Guys, where, where juices soak up or fragrances are, are weaker on you, kind of give you a, a note of where I'm at. But it's just the majestic thing that... Um, as you know, it heals a tree and goes in and, and expounds itself into a tree. You're putting this right on your body, putting it in your body, and you, it's all happening there too. So for now, that's my review of Aroha Kaku from Insar. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, you know, keep uh, subscribing, like this, and suggestions. Let's work on this Ood journey together. Uh, thanks, guys, and peace out. Hey guys, uh, Brandon back again. A uh, bonus footage got done with the gym at uh, a workout, and uh, excited to wear the oud into um, the workout. Wrote my notes down here. Um, yeah, I had to update you guys at what this thing did um, during the workout during high heat. The the oud turned into a pine tar. Uh, yeah, like you'd rub, rub on a baseball bat. So, I mean, fit right in with a workout. Uh, it, very strong uh, pine tar uh, scent with a musk. Think of a Kills musk with just this fresh pine tar note and slight birch. The, the, somehow the smokiness and all the other notes totally faded. It was just these notes during the workout. And then when I finished... And driving home, you're not going to believe what happened. Maybe some of you guys will. I don't know if you guys have tried this stuff before. This th Even right now, <laughs> this thing is sweet. Nothing, nothing like I explained earlier. I just had this sweet wrist like I dipped it in a caramel macchiato. Um, with just slight smoked espresso, very, very slight. I mean, barely smoky. 
um, that it turned into very sweet. Um, a little bit of, um, you know, like you put some cinnamon and, and nutmeg on it. So oriental all of a sudden. Again, that's almost four full fragrances, fragrances I've, I've discussed in one oil. And I, I mean, totally, we're total, talking total transformation on your skin. Um, the musk, it's like a musk is there with the sweetness. Just this sweet, perfect, I mean, I would love to have a cologne smell like this all the time. Um, again, you know, look at the whole video because if you don't like the heavy stuff that went up um, on front, it takes a long time to get to this point. Um, every time, I don't think there's such a thing as hot weather and cold weather oud. Oud is an oil that becomes part of you. It's like it knows what it needs to be for you. It, it, it's, it's this incredible adventure of learning what this oil is. It, the way it's reacting to my body, chemistry and body, and the activities I'm doing, it's, it's like it's, it's giving me. It's giving me so much. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that was it's the perfect smell during a workout. Those petrol, that, that tar. And that's what the oil does to the tree. It heals the tree off of, of different molds. It has to become life for that tree. Um, I, I don't... It's, it's amazing learning about this oil. It, it is an amazing oil. It lifts your mood. It it um, just gives and gives and gives. It, it's incredible. Uh, th these last three experiences have been incredible. And I, I've worn Oud plenty of times before, but not with the working out. And it, it like becomes part of your life, part of your day. And I wasn't wearing that much of them <laughs> because they're expensive. I mean, I put for, for the the reviews when I know I'm going to review it. I do a minimum of two wearings. I'm putting heavy swipes on so I can get the full effect. And I mean, I'm not dipping the thing twice, but I'm, I, there's definitely a lot of oil on my wrist and putting it on there. And it, it's not overpowering today. It, 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 like it becomes part of you and what you're doing. Um, yeah, working with this stuff has just been an amazing amazing experience um that's what i have some bonus footage for you guys uh again thanks for being on this journey with me comments are welcome how you guys are experiencing oud what your thoughts are am i the only crazy one that, that's getting this effect on these ouds thanks a lot guys and have a great day bye be blessed